In this video, I'll be going over the differences between Turbo, Lightning, LCM, and HyperSD. And what all of these are, are model acceleration techniques, which allow you to generate images much faster than what you'd normally be able to do. Now, before I start explaining each of them, there's one concept that you have to understand first, and that is the concept of steps. So if I click Q prompt right now using a step of 20, I generate this image. And the easiest way to think about steps is think about it as the amount of effort stable diffusion would put into generating an image. So if I put it to something like 50 and generate my image, I'd generate a much higher quality looking image. However, on the other hand, if I do something like five and then click OK and then click Q prompt, the image generated is of lower quality than the one we had when it was at steps 20. And so that's why you see people will rarely use steps below something like 20 because anything below that will generate low quality images. Now, what these different model acceleration techniques that I'll be going over today will do is allow you to generate images using these low step counts while still preserving image quality. Now, the first technique I want to show you is SDXL Turbo. And what is interesting about this is that it's able to generate images using only one step. And so to download the model, what you need to do is go to the Hugging Face page and then go to Files and Versions. And then depending if you want the higher quality model or the lower quality model, you'll download one of these. And then once that's done, you simply put it where all your other models are in your Stable Diffusion folder. Now back in Comfy UI, to use the XTXL Turbo model, you have to load it in. And you also have to do a few additional steps, which is put in the ST Turbo Scheduler node and the K Sampler Select node. Now, if you don't want to build this workflow by yourself, I'll leave a link in the description of an example workflow that you can use. So this is actually the one that I'm going to be using. And all you need to do is drag this image into your workflow and, and you should be good to go. And now if I click Q prompt, now this was the image that was generated and you can see it's still of a relatively high quality, even though we are only using one step. And just for comparison's sake, I'm going to generate an image using only one step but this time use a normal stable diffusion model. So this is a normal text -to image workflow. And now if I click Q prompt, and this was the image that was generated. And hopefully from this, you should be able to see why when SDXL Turbo came out, why everyone was amazed with its ability to generate high quality images using only one step. Now, SDXL is not perfect. And there's a few things that you have to be aware of whenever you use it. The first thing is that negative prompts actually have no effect on your image. The other thing is that when generating images, you have to keep your CFG value very low. So typically when you're normally generating an image, you'd keep the CFG value to something like seven or eight. But with Turbo, you have to keep it between something like one and two. Because if I do set it to something like eight and then click Q prompt, this was the image that was generated. And so hopefully from this, you should be able to see why you should keep your CFG values between one and two. The other thing, is that although it is named as SDXL Turbo Model, the image resolution is that of SD 1.5, so 512 by 512. If you try to use SDXL resolutions, so 1024 by 1024, and then generate your image, what you will see is that you get this weird effect where it sort of generates duplicates within your image. Another thing I want to point out is that if you want, you can use additional steps within your image. So if I now click 5 and then click Q prompt, and the image that was generated is of relatively high quality, but typically with SDXL Turbo, you only really use one step. And just to make math slightly more confusing, the community has generated models based off SDXL Turbo. And while you may think that these models would only require one step, seeing as it's based off SDXL Turbo, that is not always the case. So for example, this model Turbo Vision XL, which is based off this model, actually requires you to use three to five steps and a specific sampler in order to get the best output. And also pay attention that it uses the normal SDXL resolutions rather than the ones in SD 1.5. And so that's just something to be aware of whenever you see a model that's based off SDXL Turbo. So moving on, the next technique is SDXL Lightning. And what's different about this one compared to SDXL Turbo is that first of all, you can either use it as a model file or a LoRa file. And they've also differentiated between the amount of steps that you'll be generating as well. So if I wanted to generate an image using four steps using SDXL Lightning, I'd have to download either one of these models. And if I only wanted to do something like two steps, I'd have to download from these models. And so just for this video, I'll be using the SDXL Lightning four-step LoRa file. 
And what you need to do here is just download the model and then put it into your models law folder like so. Alternatively, if you did want to use the model file, it's exactly the same way of installing like we did with the SDXL Turbo model. Now I have this workflow set up ready to use SDXL Lightning. And if you're wondering where I got it from, if you go back to the model card and then scroll all the way down, you have example workflows depending on if you're using the model file or you're using the LoRa file. Now back in ConfUI, if I now click Q prompt, now this was the image that was generated and seeing how it was done with only four steps is quite impressive. Now a few things to note with SDXL Lightning is that we have to keep the CFG value low and they recommend keeping the sampler name to Euler and scheduler to SGM uniform. And you can deviate from this, but the results might not be as good. A few things I want to point out with SDXL Lightning is that it's able to generate SDXL resolution images in good quality, unlike SDXL Turbo, but it also suffers the same problem that Turbo suffers from in that the negative prompts don't really work. Now, I just want to point out why SDXL Lightning and Turbo don't really listen to your negative prompts. And that's probably because we have the CFG value set very low. Now, typically a higher CFG value would mean that Stable Diffusion listens to your prompts more. But because we're using such a low CFG value, the negative prompts are essentially ignored. Now, one big advantage of SDXL Lightning over Turbo is that it functions as a normal SDXL model or LoRa file meaning that I can combine it with other SDXL models or LoRa files and it still will be able to work as intended. So actually in this example, I actually use an SDXL model with the SDXL Lightning LoRa file and it still worked as intended. And just like with SDXL Turbo, you will find that the community has also made models based off SDXL Lightning. Now moving on, we have another technique and it's called LCM. What I like about it is that it can be used for both STXL and ST1.5. So if I now click on the STXL and then go to files and versions and then download the PyTorch LoRa weights. And then what you do from here is put it into your LoRa file the same way that I did for the Lightning LoRa file that I showed you previously. And if you want an example workflow to use, just go down into the description and there should be a workflow ready for you to use. Now back in ConfUI, I've loaded the LCM LoRa as well as the LCM workflow. And now if I click Q prompt, and this was the image that was generated and it looks decent considering we only did this with five steps. Now there are two reasons why I like using LCM over something like SDXL Lightning. And the first reason is that as long as I have the right LCM installed, it works both with SDXL and SD1.5. And the other reason is that Unlike with STXL Lightning, where I have to make sure I have the right model or LoRa file, depending on the step that I will be using. With LCM, I don't need to worry about that. And so if I wanted to, I could change the steps to something like eight and then generate my image. And the image generation process still worked as expected. Now, the last technique I'll be going over today is HyperSD. And to install this is sort of similar to STXL Lightning in that we have a model and LoRa option to pick from. And like with Lightning, we have different files depending on the steps that we want to use. Also, if you want an example workflow, if you go to the ConfUI folder and you'll find workflows here, which you can download and drag into your ConfUI. Now that I have the workflow set up, I'm ready to generate the images. Now there are two things to keep in mind before you use this workflow. The first one is make sure the steps that you're using align with the steps of the K sampler. And another thing, if you're getting an error saying that there are some missing nodes, what you need to do is go to your ConfUI manager and then click on install missing custom nodes. And if you don't have ConfUI manager, it's basically a must have extension for your ConfUI. And if you just search for it online, you should find guides on how to install it. Now back in ConfUI, if I now click Q prompt. Now this was the image that was generated using HyperSXL and as expected, the quality is quite good. Now. Like LCM, you do have the option of using this with STXL and ST1.5 models. So if you went back to the HyperSD model page, you should see that we have different options depending on if you want to do the ST1.5 models or the STXL models. Now the question becomes, which one should you use? Now, typically I like to use the ones that come in LoRa form. And so that's basically all of them except for Turbo. And the reason for that is, is because it allows me to use a custom checkpoint 
with the different techniques and in that way have higher quality images. Now, based on this, I've made a workflow which will be available for patrons, which basically compares the three different techniques which come in lower form. And from here, hopefully you should be able to see the difference between all three. So I've got this simple prompt, which is ship scenic and ray tracing. And so if I click Q prompt, now looking at the images generated, I would say in terms of quality, the best one would be perhaps hyperesty or lightning. I think it's a tie between the two, partly because even though the hyperesty one looks better, it doesn't really look like a ship. And the lightning one, while it's not as good in terms of quality, it does actually look like a ship. And in last place, we would have the LCM, which although it did follow the prompt somewhat, it's not as good as the other two in this scenario. Now I've changed the prompt to be sketch of a cat, and then I'm going to click Q prompt again. And looking at the images generated, I would say that HyperSD came first. Once again, it was a close tie between this one and lightning. And the only reason it won was partly because it shaded in the eyes, unlike lightning. And once again, LCM did come last. Now I'm just going to do one more prompt and generate the image. And from the images that were generated, I would say all three look sort of similar in terms of quality. And looking at it from a glance, it's hard to tell which one is objectively the better one. Now, bear in mind, all this testing was done on four steps on the base SDXL model. Even though HyperSD and Lightning seem to be the better options here, it could be more than likely that on different settings, something like LCM proves to be the better option. Now, if you want even more comparisons, I'll leave this link in the description below. And what it is, if you scroll all the way down, is it compares the difference between SDXL Lightning, SDXL Turbo, and LCM LoRa. So for example, if you scroll down to the Turbo part, you can see it compares between Lightning and Turbo at different steps. And if you scroll even further down, you can see that it also compares it alongside LoRa. So here we have it at different steps and of different image prompts. So that's all for today. Leave any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.